Who's gonna love you like that? Taking care of yourself is a love no one else could ever give. Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body. Smoking and drinking will not help. Sniffing and drugs, you'll hurt yourself. You gotta remember to check your blood pressure. You gotta take good care of yourself. Who's gonna love you like that? Taking care of yourself is a love no one else could ever give. Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body. In with this week's edition of Health Matters, I am your host, Shevani Nisbet, Health Educator at the Health Promotion Unit. The month of January is observed as Cervical Cancer Month. Cervical cancer is a cancer that affects women, and it's very important to know a little about cervical cancer. So with me today, I have Dr. Essien, who is a gynecologist at the Alexandra Hospital. Dr. Essien will be giving us a little insight on cervical cancer. Good morning, Dr. Essien. Good morning, Shevani, and uh, to our viewing audience, uh, Thank you for joining us. Essien, what is cervical cancer? Well, cervical cancer is, is definitely one of the world's deadliest cancers. It obviously affects women. It affects the, an area of the body um, called the cervix, or in common terms, the neck of the womb. Um, obviously, it's an area of the body that's unseen to the eye, except you know, when a doctor does an examination. And worldwide, um, it affects um, women mostly in the developing country, about 85% of the deaths recorded according to WHO um, um, is in the developing countries and we have approximately um, a quarter of a million women dying every year oh. as a result of, of, um, of cervical cancer. Um, here locally in the Federation um, we, we, ha we had seen some numbers um, that were r relatively elevated for the small population, and um, I can personally say on Nevis, um, you know, due to pretty intense work done yeah. in in the public and private sectors, trying to encourage women to do the screenings and so on. Um, slowly, those numbers, from an observational po uh, point of view, they have been coming down. Cool. Um, we've had since 2013. Um, I believe three confirmed cases of cervical cancer. To dwell a little bit more into exactly what it is, um, yes, it's a, it's one of the many cancers that affect the human body, um, but also people have to understand that um, it it really involves very minute changes at the cellular microscopic levels, okay. um, which over time could um, become more extensive and result in you know more more damage, not only to the cervix, but to the other organs. What causes cervical cancer? What we've seen over the past decades is um, that the causes really gravitate to anything that would cause damage at the cellular level of the neck of the womb, okay. especially that portion of the neck of the womb or the cervix which is exposed to the vagina. And the beginning portions of a small, um, I, would, I like to call it a small canal or entryway mm -hmm. in, in, that leads up into the womb, mm -hmm. that particular area is what is prone to, the, to very frequent changes okay. um, from childbirth, uh, from uh, during puberty, and, 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 um, and of course due, due to sexual activity. Mm -hmm. But direct causes, the only one particular cause that we scientists have been able to identify um, is a virus. Okay. It's the human papilloma virus. We have uh, seen that there are close to 20 subtypes of this virus which um, are highly um, causative of, of, of cervical cancer. Um, there are more than 120 around the, I mean, known wow. subtypes of the HPV virus, all right? So it's, it's a big family of viruses. It causes something as benign as genital warts. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. But it's a different subtype. But there are other subtypes or strains of the same virus that will cause um, cervical cancer. We have, you could call them mitigating factors, mm -hmm. all right, or risk factors that would also 
um, create the, um, the the environment for for cancer to develop. So if we have these changes at the cellular level mm -hmm. long enough untreated right. eventually yeah. it will lead to that. So amongst the risk factors of course is HPV infection. Um, the, the human papilloma virus, like I mentioned, it's it's a big family of viruses which you have different strains. Um, um, worldwide they've been able to identify approximately sixteen of them. All right? 16 to 20 of them which are linked to, linked to cervical cancer. Okay, um, of course, for any viral infection to get hold of, of any person, um, it needs an immune system that is unable to fight, it, fight yes. back. So yes. once you have uh, immune um, deficiencies as a result of, let's say, um, using treatment for other um, health issues, it would result in your body um, falling prone to these things. So examples would be, for example, uh, women with undergoing treatment for other types of cancer. Okay. okay All right. Yeah. So their immunity is re reduced. Uh, a very probably well known is is the is the HIV virus, which causes uh, AIDS. Okay. So people with HIV AIDS would have reduced immunity as well. Okay. All right. So. <clears throat> if this is a recurring problem in the pa in the person, then you tend to have um, a, a pretty fair condition for for HPV virus to attack. It is a sexually transmitted um, virus. Though. We have other viral infections like herpes. Mm -hmm. So women with herpes are more prone to having cervical cancer. Uh, race is a factor. Okay. It's more frequent in Hispanics black women and um, Native American Indians. More mitigating factors around there as um, what I could recall for example a more important one would be um, let's say toxic habits. Smoking is right. involved in <laughs> practically Everything. all cancer. Yes. So, all right so um, you would have uh, smoking as a factor just have to be and it, it's the smoking of anything. When we talk of smoking, we tend to think of uh, only tobacco. tobacco, but you know, we, we, we understand nowadays there are many other stuff that can be smoked. Yes. What that leads to, <laughs> obviously, is a decrease in your immunity as well, as well as the direct damage of some of these burnt chemical products in the, in the smoked substance. That would result in direct attacks to the, to the cells. And of course, uh, the use, now this is one that we, scientists haven't been exactly sure of how it produces uh, or how it could cause cervical cancer, but the use of oral contraceptives, all right, the use of hormonal products, all right, in in the hormonal substance in our in the oral contraceptives over long periods of time has always been an issue uh, and considered a risk factor for breast cancer as well as <clears throat> ovarian cancer and and, and of course um, uh, cervical cancer. Right. So um, these are women who obviously have to get checks more frequently and so on. Yes. It's not, they have, they have, there's no direct link, but we've seen that in the groups of women who've had cervical cancer, more of them were on uh, oral contraceptives than not. Okay. 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 Right. So, and of course, um, age. Okay. All right. Age is a factor. All right. Um, so we would find that um, obviously cervical cancer is a very rare thing. In, in, in young girls, okay. um, ages 15 or less, you, you very rare. Very rare. All right. Now, you do tend to see it in the late teens and up into the mid 20s. All right. That's when they could occur. And of course, in women 40 and above. Okay. Um, of course, one of the issues we that have been related to this um, uh, grouping. Is, is the advent of sexual activity. Uh, one of the biggest worries for us, especially for me particularly, is, is what we see as the increasingly younger age of sexual initiation. Yes. It's very simple. The longer you, you have been exposed through sex, mm -hmm. to HPV infection, to other infections, etc., etc., the higher risk, obviously, right. for contracting this thing eventually and, and it developing into cervical cancer. All right, so it's very important that <clears throat> among the preventive measures 
to delay second initiation yes. until until much later. Yes. All right. So that um, basically covers uh, risk factors. There were uh, there is one particular risk factor which uh, was pretty much talked about in the 60s, 70s, up to 90s. And of course, these are women who are now, um, the, at the time, they were young women. Mm -hmm. And they were being administered a drug called uh, diethyl um, bestrol, which is a type of estrogen, DES. All right? And they were being administered this during pregnancy as a form, uh, as a medication to help reduce the nausea and vomiting oh, okay. in okay. pregnancy. And unfortunately, it produces a lot of um, um, oh. um, malformations. Wow. In right. the babies, too? In the babies. So there's a big group of, uh, of, of ladies who suffered that. And of course, people who were uh, administered this medication and their offsprings, the female offsprings, we've also discovered that they are at high risk for developing cervical cancer now so many years after the drug was banned and so on and so forth. Wow. All right, at least for the use in pregnancy. What are some of the symptoms of cervical cancer? Oh yes, um, uh, cervical cancer, we, again, I would like to emphasize the cervix is a part of the body we don't see. Right. Okay? True. And oftentimes because we don't see it, we, uh, we don't interpret some of the earlier signs as something to worry about because again there are so many other changes in the in the female body that could give you the same sign right. or symptom. Um, early cancer really doesn't hurt. There's no pain involved okay. for the most part. Okay. All right. Um, but if a woman starts having sex, um, sorry, pain during sex, she should make sure she gets checked out you know, do the routine screening and so on for, for cervical cancer as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you start having abnormal bleeding, bleeding after intercourse, and of course, um, abnormal bleeding after mm -hmm. menstruations or between menstruations, or even abnormally heavy bleeding during the period cycle itself, um, are, are also symptoms that something may be wrong down okay. there. So uh, you want to uh, keep an eye on it. Of course, our women who have gone into menopause um, obviously are not expected to have menstrual cycles anymore. So as soon as a woman of that age starts presenting um, bleeding, mm -hmm. it's one of the things that we, 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 we check okay. to see if it is related to cervical cancer. So anything abnormal women should definitely at, go and see? At all times. And uh, of course, let me emphasize as well that the presence of a vaginal discharge does not always mean that that discharge is normal. Right. You have to check it out. Don't just assume that the discharge, oh, it's something that, you know, comes every month or whatever it is. And especially if the discharge has been particularly heavy. Yeah. Or is malodorous or the color is just different from what you've been seeing in the past, you'll get it checked out as well. Generally, uh, the symptoms are not something that you would say it is, is easily recognizable. Mm. All right. And that is one of the reasons why we try to push for frequent screening. Yes. And you, there's a certain programs we try to follow and make sure that our women get um, screened at the right time. What can be done to prevent cervical cancer? Well, we've mentioned the fact that uh, cervical, cervical cancer is, is uh, the primary cause of it is, is known now as the HPV right. virus. So obviously, um, any other um, sexually transmitted infection weakens the structure of the mucosa or the, or the layer over the cervix and damages the cell. Any of these things um, would lead or could lead to that. So you want to, as I mentioned earlier, when we're talking about the risk factors and the age, mm -hmm. um, we want our teens to abstain from sex reasonably until they get married. But if they can't, you got to wait till your late teens or 20s to start the initiation yeah. of sex. All right? So, um, and uh, this is very important because, like I mentioned earlier, the longer a young woman has been exposed to, um, through sex, to any of these um, infections, then, you know, the risks are much, much higher. Mm -hmm. um, smoking, you got to quit smoking. It's not healthy generally, so um, you have to make efforts to, to quit smoking. And the other um, 
aspect that, of, of prevention that we look at is, is um, increasing your immunity. Right. All right. So a healthy lifestyle is always encouraged. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful in all, in all, in all yes. um, of, of health. And um, back to sex again, we know that having multiple partners increases your risk of developing STIs and any of uh, multitude of, of um, genital, you know, lower genital tract um, problems. Um, limiting women should limit to themselves to one partner and make sure the partner doesn't have multiple partners. Right. The woman herself might not have multiple partners, but her partner definitely right. can't have multiple partners because you know, transmission of, of infections are much easier now. And if you're going to have multiple partners, you should use condoms. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The condom, the condom prevents transmission of, of of HIV, which everybody knows by now. Yes. As well as other infections like the herpes we mentioned is a, yes. also a, a risk factor. All right, and yeah. HPV. And so you've been speaking about pap smear. You've mentioned it a few times. So tell us what is a pap smear and how is it done. Uh, a pap smear or Papa Nicolau smear, actually a very simple procedure that um, was developed over the years uh, by several scientists. Um, the, 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 the method we use and, and which was made more popular was by a Greek um, physician, uh, Papa Nicolau. And um, he suggested, um, after extensive studies, that just by getting samples of, of the superficial layer of the cervix, you could actually get a predictive value from the examination of those samples. Okay. So obviously these, this is a, a sample that is microscopic. You're not going to see it with your naked eye. Okay. Um, so uh, getting a, a smear essentially means that a sample was taken from the surface of the cervix and then smeared onto a slide. All right, And then examined under a microscope by the, the, the required um, person. So, and by studying these different slides, we've been able to see where changes occur from a normal um, cell structure mm -hmm. uh, to abnormal cell structures, which have then been associated to leading to cancer on the long run. Okay. So, um, for the most part, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a simple procedure. You, <clears throat> we take samples from two areas from two areas of the cervix. So this is an, a sample of, the, of, of a slide, and this is uh, what we, a little wooden device called a spatula, okay. all right, which we use essentially to scrape off those cells. Uh, the scraping, it sounds a little harsh, but it really shouldn't be painful. Yes, I know I'm a man, but <laughs> I know you ladies would complain. All right, but it, it's a procedure that's done very quickly. It is very cheap, okay. which hence the popularity worldwide. And um, we also have a, a modality that helps us get samples from inside the neck of the womb or inside the cervix, which is a brush, a cytobrush. So essentially, we insert this and roll it around. It will scrape off cells, all right. all right? And then we use that and just smear it on, on our slide and use uh, something called a fixative. Uh, it comes in a small spray can and you just um, essentially freezing the, the, the sample. Okay. All right? uh, so that it can be observed long after it's been taken. If, if we just leave it to, to, to dry, you know, evaporation and all these things, it would heat, would yeah. eventually damage it. So um, that is the part that is easy. The hard part is getting women to get on the examination table and have an instrument called the speculum, the famous duck bill, <laughs> yes. all right, um, inserted inside the vagina, okay? Um, I guess this will be a little uncomfortable yes. for anybody, yes. all right? So, uh, but again, you know, the expertise of our health providers, we, uh, you know, um, would help to ensure that this is done in the least painful manner. All right. It is uncomfortable, but I assure you, it's a procedure that's in less than ten minutes. You're on and off the table. Yep. All right. So um, 
we of course uh, advocate for the use of these plastic. They're less cold, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but um, they're 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 a little bit more user friendly. Okay. Okay. Right. So uh, the pap smear then the sample on the slide is then sent with all the required details of the patient's history okay. um, to a cytology unit. All right, uh, where you have cytologists or people trained in studying these things under a microscope. Um, where you would have, like I said, trained cytologists, you have a pathologist, a specialist in, in, in that area that would then identify um, the different cells seen on that. And right. so that is what is put down on, on the PAP report and then referred back to, to the department or unit that it came from. Wooden spatula used in taking cell samples of the cervix, of the surface of the cervix. A cyto brush, this is used in getting samples from inside the cervical canal. And this is a, a glass slide in which the sample is then smeared on. Mm -hmm. Hence the name pap smear. A speculum is a, a device uh, that allows for opening of a of a cavity. Because the vagina the vagina is really a closed cavity. Mm -hmm. So this would expand the walls of the vagina in order to expose the cervix at the very end here. Alright, so to the to the person observing through this and you'll be able to see the cervix there and be able to take the sample as, as, as well as make observations as to what how it looks like because okay. all those details are important and another um, advancement in, in, in the screening technology that we use nowadays is the use of liquid cytology um, one of the biggest issues we've had with the regular pap smear or the traditional pap smear by putting the sample on the slide, is that we sometimes lose sample. All right. So in order to capture as much of the original sample as possible and to preserve that sample, um, uh, we've started using liquid um, cytology, in which uh, the sample, again, we're using an instrument, it's very similar to the brush I showed you uh, previously, but this one is essentially a one step. Okay. All right. The, this thin part of the brush is the part that goes into the, into the canal okay. or the opening of the neck of the womb, of the cervix. And of course the broader um, sides of the brush would get the samples off okay. the surface. Okay. So in one quick step you insert, turn around, get your samples and break off the tip and it goes inside a preservative. Now what this does, it enables the examiner at, uh, at the lab, at the cytology lab, to now get as much sample as possible whereby, you know, in previous, the traditional form you might have missed out something, but in this way you get close to, close to 95, 98% of, of wow. what you took off. That's good. Yeah, so um, it also enables um, the, the cytologist to test for HPV. Okay. Because we could get these from the same sample, test for HPV, uh, actually know what strain of HPV, that's another for the DNA typing essentially of the HPV, and then mm -hmm. be able to tell the, 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 the doctor that look, you know, this patient has um, first the pap smear, this type of result, and secondly, whether HPV is present or not, mm -hmm. and what type of HPV it is. And that would enable more complete. Um, treatment and follow-up. That is awesome. Absolutely. So this eliminates the, the others that you you spoke about or everything it, is done? It would be, elim it, it eliminates all the, the the traditional one. Okay. Obviously costing is a yes. problem. Um, the, these are, are are processed at centers that process thousands at one time. Of course, yes. So it's um, <clears throat> it's it's uh, for now it's a bit difficult for us here in the Caribbean with the small population that we have generally um, to have enough samples 
to be processed at the labs. So it's a little bit expensive because of that. But uh, obviously, as technology improves, we might be able to get cheaper, cheaper sure. um, um, testing them. And um, this, this is you may hear this as or uh, hear of this uh, as liquid-based cytology. Mm -hmm. All right. So we do have also another. Uh, we don't have it available here, but there's a, a computer screen screening really? of samples. So what, again, from that. one of these, <laughs> they place it on, on uh, well, essentially, there's a, there's a computer that would, that would scan the sample. This uh, computer screening it just picks out abnormal cells from the sample, the sample itself. Right. So it eliminates, uh, you know, a, a lot of human error. Yes. Okay. Wow. So um, that's another advancement that we that we know of. Um, but for now, in the, here in the Caribbean, in our developing countries, we are, the the traditional pap smear is still very very valuable, because it um, it's a very cheap uh, test to to, to run, mm -hmm. and obviously it can be done quicker or quickly, and um, and and the results. Although it, the results are dependent on the total amount of samples that's collected, uh, and that is a reflection of, of let's say, the expertise of the of the person taking the sample right. as well, um, which is why not really everybody does pap smears. You have dedicated nurses and doctors that, that tend to do it because you know with practice comes the that expertise. Yes. At what time of month should women go to get their pap smears done? Okay, a pap smear should be done um, generally the week after the period has, has, has ended. Okay. All right. Uh, this is to avoid um, uh, the different changes that are associated with increasing or decreasing um, hormone levels. Okay. And obviously the, the absence of blood. Uh, so that is the best time of a, a woman's cycle, really, to get it done. Uh, it is important to emphasize that the woman really should uh, abstain from sex at least 72 hours prior to the examination as well to avoid getting false readings as as a result of uh, the micro trauma during right. the intercourse uh, so um, those are really the, the tenets as to when to get it done so yep. for women who have um, gone past the menopause, they are still screened okay. for pap smear. Uh, pap smear screening worldwide is, a, is done generally till 65, 70 years of age. All right? There are several protocols that we, that we, that we follow um, and recommend. And for the most part, everyone around the world, whether it's in China, US, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Nigeria, South Africa, wherever it is, we follow basically the same protocols. Because we want to, you know, we 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 try to maintain women within the screening program, and release them from the screening program at a certain age, like I mentioned, 65, 70, as long as they've had normal okay. previous uh, yeah. pap smears. How soon after doing a pap smear do you get your results back? Well, that depends very much on the on the availability of cytology services. Um, in, here within the Federation, there's been a m remarkable improvement because we've had um, uh, more cytologists join the training program in, okay. uh, in St. Kitts. And uh, here at, at Alexander Hospital, we do have a trained cytologist. Um, she finished her training a, a year ago. And, um, and obviously, you know, uh, we hope the public health system supports her in getting the required equipment and so on so that we could get our pap smears um, screened here right. locally instead of having to send them over to, to St. Kitts. It's one central place for the country so you would um, uh, there would be some delay okay. in getting right. the results but generally we are having a, a pretty good turnaround of about three to four weeks right now. Okay. So okay. It's, a, it's a huge improvement. That's true. That is true. And how often should a pap smear be done? Very, very interesting question. Um, the, the guidelines as proposed by several organizations, including the WHO, World Health Organization, um, <clears throat> American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, uh, a whole series of, of, uh, of organizations, 
propose that women who have initiated sexual activity um, by the age of 21, okay. all right, or three years after initiation of sexual activity, whichever one comes first, right. must get the pap smear done. How often? Now, that pap smear screening should be done every two years. Okay. All right? Okay. Obviously, depending on the result, the, the, the timing or frequency of, of uh, screening will be would change. Okay. If you have an abnormal result, I expect to be told to do the pap smear every six months or 12 months. Um, and um, in some instances, as, uh, as I mentioned, in the older women um, who have had three consecutive normal pap smears uh, by the age of 65, mm -hmm. or within the last 10 years by the age of 65 or 70, depending on which one you want to go with, um, then you could release them from the program. Okay, okay. And, um, but again, it, it will vary, in, especially when you do have an abnormal pap smear, because we want to screen those women with abnormal smears a little bit more frequently. Yes. And, and prevent any mishaps. Okay. And so we've been speaking about the importance of a pap smear. And so what would you say are some of the disadvantages a woman would face if she hasn't done a pap smear, like ever, or hasn't done one since five years ago? Correct. I mean, it's, it's um, of course, the, the presence of an abnormality. Right. Not necessarily cancer, but ab abnormality of the cervical cells, um, of course, would lead or can lead to cancer. Mm -hmm. um, in many instances, the progression from s cellular abnormality to full-blown cancer, it, it takes a good time, which is the saving grace, really, right. when it comes to cervical pathology. Yes. Um, but we've seen cases in which women had a normal pap smear reported, let's say, in the month of October, and by February, she comes in with all these abnormal bleeding and so on and so forth, and, wow. and it is cancer. All right, but those are far and in between. So this is one of the, you know, things that um, a woman will be missing out if she doesn't do this um, screening at the suggested timing. So we want uh, women to to remember to do the screening. I I tell my patients. Uh, family and friends, I said, give it to yourself as a birthday present. Right, that makes sense because it's All like right. every year, right? <laughs> I, I, I know <laughs> when we, a lot of people run away from getting any negative news or anything like that before they celebrate something important, but <laughs> right. that is your present to yourself. Right. You need to take care of yourself. So it, it makes sense. So around a date that you, that you would remember, I think that most people will remember the birthday, so they will, it's easier for you to remember to do it around that time. And, 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 you know, give yeah. yourself the present of good health, right? a good uh, bill, uh, clean bill of health. Right, and women, so regardless of the fact that it's hereditary or you just don't feel like you have it, you should still go and get a pap smear, right? You should get a pap smear. Um, uh, talking of hereditary, it's not hereditary though. No? No, 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 no. no. Oh. Uh, of course, having family members, uh, close family members um, with any type of cancer, obviously yes. puts you at high risk, it does. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't, there's no genetic link, so to speak. Okay. There is a genetic link for ovarian cancer. But not cervical? Not cervix, so, and, and breast cancer, some breast cancers wow. as well. Yeah. But, um, but uh, again, it's one of the deadliest forms of cancers, of cancer around, and it's probably the easiest to screen for and prevent. What's the reason why it's one of the deadliest? Was because of the fact that it is it is unseen. Okay. Of okay. course, one of the m most frequent uh, symptoms is the bleeding. Right. It right. might be abnormal, but for the most part, you one a woman might ignore it and say, "Well, you know, we had intercourse. Maybe it might have been a little rough. Maybe that's why." Or 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 she might think it's an early period right. and, and kind of ignore it because of that. Might think it's some changes in her cycle and would ignore it because of that. So by the time you do actually come to get a, a check, because during the pap, well, during the pap smear screening process itself, 
we very often do a pelvic examination oh, okay. to see if there's any spread to mm -hmm. anything with the other organs surrounding the cervix. So uh, because um, because of the kind of vague symptoms that it does present mm -hmm. and because it's ignored for the most part, so by the time a woman comes, it's it, it's pretty advanced. Wow. So um, you may not have much of an option except to tell the patient, look, you know, you're going to need cancer treatment, and do surgery or, or both, and, and that's it. Uh, but we are beginning to see a little bit more of a consciousness in terms of, okay. of, of, of getting screening done, people are a little bit more concerned. And I encourage our, our male um, members and of society to encourage the women to get it done because That's true. It, our women, our past, our present and our future. Yes. All right, in all yes. ways. So uh, if we ignore them, you know, you ignore yourself because you, you as a as a guy will suffer. Right. That's true. All right, and um, so it's always wise to encourage women to get these things done. Okay. I have a weird question. So you see how you speak about the irregular bleeding. Correct. This, if a woman is experiencing this irregular bleeding, is it blood that looks regular? It looks normal, like the period. But is it lighter? Is it, is it the same? Can it be mistaken for that? It definitely. I would say all of the above. Yeah. All oh, right? Okay. For the most part, the reason why it's often ignored is that it actually looks just like a, a, a period. Okay. Yeah, menstrual blood. So we might, like I said, we might. Because, you know, well, it's an early start to my period. Okay. Okay? Or, or after the period has stopped and then she starts having uh, bleeding again. Oh, maybe it didn't finish or whatever. But it is something that's of concern and we try to, you know, keep a close eye on things. Okay. So let's say I think you guys do a pap smear and the results come back positive for cervical cancer. What's the next step for the medical practitioner? <clears throat> Again, um, th well, this would depend on what type of cancer is reported okay. or, or, or how like, extensive it is because during the process of doing the pap smear itself, remember I said often we'll do a pelvic examination, we are seeing mm. the quality of the cervix, what okay. it looks like. So the, if there are any signs there that, hey, um, you know, this doesn't look too healthy, so you're already alerted as to what could come. Uh, the other thing is that you'll be able to maybe see the extent of of uh, the lesion, okay. Uh, you could call it in in cervical cancer. With the lesion is the same as a let's say a tumor okay. in other organs, you know, but it's on a more minute scale. Okay. But you may be able to see the extent of the lesion and um, determine whether or not, according to the uh, the the result, okay, determine whether or not you, know, you could do certain types of surgeries oh. and. Of course, you would have to remit that patient to to um, an oncologist. Okay. All right. Um, both for the, what we call the clinical oncologist or the clinical uh, the oncology surgeon, which who would do the surgical intervention and so on and so forth. However, most of the reports we get are of abnormalities okay. or precancerous. Okay. abnormalities which if you leave them on their own they will develop to of cancer course, yes. that is where we we intervene a lot as, as a gynecologist trained in, in cervical pathology um, and colposcopy we would do and follow up uh, on these patients using different methods uh, one of the things of course that uh, when they get an abnormal pap smear is um, using this instrument okay. all right which is a colposcope it's just a, a colposcope really is, is, a, is a magnifying instrument using a high-powered um, lens okay. as well as a, a pretty intense source of, of light. Uh, I'll just turn it on. Okay. Oh. And it has uh, filters that would enable us to see different uh, things on the surface of the, of the, of the cervix. Okay. Now, with this instrument now, we're doing a colposcope called postcopy is a long word, mm -hmm. we would actually be able to see um, areas which don't conform to normality. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And in conjunction with the pap smear report or the liquid cytology report and so on, we were able to determine exactly what we need to do, whether we need to remove a sample 
that's a biopsy, yes. remove a sample and send it for further studies, or just routinely follow up closely with, with colposcopy. That's why I said, depending on the result of the pap smear, you could have, be told to do a follow-up every six months, every 12 months, or even shorter. Oh. Yeah. Because this then helps, number one, it reduces um, unnecessary and overly aggressive interventions. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I remember back years ago when you, one really didn't have access to colposcopy and so on and so forth. You wanted to do what was really best for the patient, which is prevent any further um, progress right. of, of a lesion that you were not sure exactly what it is. So you might have done a surgery that will be a little bit more aggressive. You know, it subjects the patient to a little bit of stress. Um, mm. But you really want to make sure that you don't have anything after that. All of most of that has been eliminated by the present by the use of colposcopy, the use of um, essentially microsurgery because we use very small instruments in removing, uh, doing what we call leap, mm -hmm. um, is, is uh, using an electrosurgical equipment to excise or remove a part of the cervix that we deem is abnormal from what we've seen on the colposcope. And um, and send that sample to be examined further by the by the cytologist by the pathologist. All right. So um, of course there are other things that we could do if if, if we are in doubt we, we could send the patient for imaging technology, um, including your um, your ultrasounds to see if there's been any spread right. to other organs internally. Your X-rays. Um, to to CT scans, all right, and of course the top of the of the of that pyramid of imaging technology is something called the PET, a positron emission tra um, uh, tomography, okay. which really uses what we call nuclear medicine to identify areas that have um, that have increased cellular activity. We know cancer of any of any form is is an abnormal growth of of cells that were in any organ. Mm -hmm. All right, so they do tend to reproduce, generate a lot of energy, and so on and so forth. So this type of scan actually picks up that increased activity in those areas and alerts you something that no other scanner can do. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Um, it, these are things that we, we tend to use in terms of, um, of following up on suspected cases if need to be. What are the treatments for cervical cancer? Well, uh, this type of cancer, like I mentioned before, you have to look at what stage it's been diagnosed at and the, and the extent of spread. As part of the treatment of patients with abnormal pap smears and lesions suggestive of, of, uh, of cancer, one of the very important things that we do uh, other than the colposcopy is to excise the lesion. We use an instrument uh, that essentially generates a, an electrical current and transmit that current to a thin um, wire shaped in the form of a loop and we use that to remove the lesion that, that has been identified during colposcopy. Uh, this procedure is called LEAP and we have loops of different sizes depending on, on the size of the lesion or the area that we're interested in excising. And this is usually the very first step in, in terms of treating um, patients with these abnormal results and from the excision of this uh, of the tissue we will be able to get now a more in-depth report more precise histological report that would enable us to manage and follow up on these patients incidents that we are seeing of younger and younger people with women with um, abnormal pap smears okay. because they initiated sex at an early age. So give yourself a present as part of your birthday celebrations yep. and get your test done other than the pap smears. I recommend you do a full body checkup 
as people like calling it. Yes. All right, and see where you stand in terms of of, of health, and you know, and even if the news is not as positive as you would like it to be, look at it that, that you did something and you caught something in time. Early, Early prevention yes. saves lives. Yes. And that has been this week's edition of Health Matters. I would like to thank Dr. Essien, who was very, very informative in telling us about cervical cancer and all the other things that come along with cervical cancer. And he also told us about the importance of getting a pap smear done at least once every two years. The fruit of the week is soursop. Soursop is a rich source of vitamin C, as well as it is filled with antioxidants that help to prevent cancer. Soursop can be used to make a wonderful drink if you are not interested in eating and sow us up as it is. Thank you for viewing. I am Shevini Nisbet, your health educator at the Health Promotion Unit. Who's gonna love you like that? Taking care of yourself is the love no one else could ever give. Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body. Smoking and drinking will not help. Sniffing and drugs, you'll hurt yourself. You gotta remember to check your blood pressure. You gotta take good care of yourself. Who's gonna love you like that? Taking care of yourself is the love no one else could ever give. Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body.